Hi guys and welcome to this video on spanning trees and minimum connector problems. <laughs> yeah, no idea. Uh, my name is Darren Masguru. Thank you very much for joining me. Hopefully this video is going to be useful. What are we doing today? Well, we're going to look at what a tree is and I don't mean the stuff that's outside. Obviously, obvious joke. Uh, understand what a spanning tree is. Understand how to find what minimum spanning trees are and understand what it means by connector problems. Okay, now all related to be perfectly honest with you and honestly this stuff is awesome it's becoming even more practical so again this stuff is actually used now do me a favor if you haven't already done so can you subscribe to my youtube channel and head over to massguru.com sign up absolutely free all of these videos are there they're sorted by textbook downloadable notes uh, exam questions and whatever else and if you can give me a shout out to your mates all right no one watches mass videos um, but I'm doing my best to hopefully help as many people as I can. Right, what about our past learning? Well, we've looked at all sorts of stuff. Graphs, networks, what do we have? We had a weighted graph. We've looked at walks, paths, cycles, so, so much. And again, if you haven't watched the videos, they're all there on mathsguru.com. And you can download these notes. In fact, stop this video now, download the notes, and then you can write all over them. Because there may be stuff I say that you don't necessarily or is not necessarily written down. Who knows what comes out of this mouth? Don't write down any of the dad jokes. They're too sad by half. All right, so... If we look at a tree, it has roots and it has branches and it sort of spreads out. But and one of the important things I'm going to say now is those branches never join back together. At least I don't know of any trees. It's not normal behavior for branches to go out and then join back together. And that's part of the key of what we're going to come up to later on. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen, here is a tree. It's a wonderful example of a tree. Uh, there are no loops, there are no multiple edges, and there are no cycles. So the point of it is we're starting at a point here, which is called A. And then it spreads out and then those points may subdivide or not and then those points may subdivide very much like a tree and if you think about it you've met these before in probability where you do tree diagrams yeah and again those deal with probabilities and all sorts of stuff so that's an example of a tree happy with that so far one of the things i want to look at is the number of uh, vertices so let's count the vertices one two three four five six seven there are seven vertices one two three four five six and there are six edges Right? That's going to become really, really important later, okay? Because when we have one less edge than the vertex, then basically it's important, but I'm not going to ruin the end of the video. All right, so this is a spanning tree, or what it exactly is a spanning tree. So a spanning tree takes that particular network there and gets rid of redundancy so that we can effectively travel from a node to any other node, but only in one direction. So we're going to try and turn this diagram here into a tree. All right, so what is a spanning tree for the graph above? Right, so every connected graph will have at least one subgraph that is a tree. Oh, a subgraph that is a tree. Do you remember what a subgraph is? That's basically where you take a section of that out. Yes, it's, we've not added extra connections. We've just basically drawn it in a different way. But in this situation, we'd be taking away all of the extra edges we don't need. All right, so a, a subgraph is a tree, and if that tree connects all the vertices in the graph, then it's called a spanning tree. All right, when we add all the edges of the spanning tree, then we find its weight. And again, that's like the previous example. So when we did Dijkstra's algorithm, we were looking at the shortest distance between point A and B. Ideally, this would give you the weight uh, between two points on there as well. Same difference. All right, so a spanning tree. This goes back very much to this here. We want to make sure that the number of edges is one less than a number of vertices. All right, so let's have a look. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Hold on. Let's try that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So we have nine vertices. So we want to try and create a tree or a spanning tree that will allow me to go with uh, eight edges. So bearing in mind these cannot join back to each other, I wonder if that makes life a bit easier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at one of the points or I'm gonna look at maybe doing the smallest numbers I possibly can. So I'm gonna start here, there's a two, there's a one, uh, there's a three, there's a three, uh, there's a two, right, so notice what I'm doing. I'm just randomly going around here trying to find the smallest values. How many edges have I got so far? One, two, three, four, five, six. Two more edges to add that will make it the smallest possible. Uh, and again, it doesn't have to be the smallest possible. For a spanning tree, it can be anyone. And that's the hint here. Spanning trees, there are going to be lots of different spanning trees. There's no reason that if I've given this to you, 
that you didn't come up with a, a different one. But that one there seems to work to me. So let's just check, are all of my vertices connected? Well, let's just highlight, yes, 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 and yes. Are my points all going back to each other? Nope, and ladies and gentlemen, there is an example of a spanning tree. Now again, stop the video, print it out, try and come up with another one. So long as the spanning tree has one less edge than it does a vertex, you are good to go. But then obviously we get to an idea of a minimum spanning tree. And in a way I sort of alluded to it with this example here. Can we find the minimum distances between all of those points? And again, this is important for computer networks and for water flow and for all road and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, we obviously we don't want to spend too much money. We want to be efficient and we want to get things from A to B in the quickest possible way. Yeah, so obviously if you notice that this diagram here, I didn't use the five, the six and the seven and the other five. They were fairly large weights, which I decided I didn't really need because I could get between all of those points in a shorter possible way. All right. So Prim's algorithm is awesome. This is a way of basically telling you how to do the minimum spanning tree. And I sort of used it a little bit just there. The rules are here, and, and by all means, print them out, put them in your summary book, yeah? But ideally, you choose a starting vertex and you choose any one you like. You inspect the edges starting from that vertex and choose one with the lowest weight. All right, if there are two edges that have the same weight, it doesn't matter. The starting vertex, the edge, and the vertex it connects to form the beginning of a minimum spanning tree. And again, I'll explain this with an example in a moment. Then what you do is expect all the edges starting from both of the vertices you've just got in your tree. Choose an extra edge, so choose the next edge that's the smallest number, yes, that's coming off of that. Basically, you keep repeating that, but you make sure that none of the edges join back together. All right, so here's an example. Here is a uh, example of our Prim's algorithm. So I'm gonna start at A. So what do we notice? We have three edges coming off of A. We've got the two, the five, and the six. The rule says choose the shortest one. Right, there we go. So I am now gonna color this in, and believe it or not, yes, this is what you're gonna do in your further math exam. In fact, last year's exam, 2020, you had to color in a graph, which I thought was awesome, or a, a yeah, a graph, a weighted network, or a weighted uh, graph, which is a network. Anyway, so what do we do now? Well, we now look at points A and B, and we try and find the smallest one that comes off of A and B, or A or B. So we've got an eight, a six, a five, and a six. So if you look at all the uh, lines that are coming off, or all the edges that are coming off of A and B, the five would be our smallest. So again, there we go, I'm coloring that in. What do we do now? Well, again, we now look at A, B, and D. So every vertex we get to, try and find the smallest way off. So A has got a six, B has got an eight and a six, D has a three, a seven, and a six. Fairly obvious there, yeah? So we're gonna color in my three. Now again, I'm never going to connect C and D back together, ever. Why? Because you can't join them back. So even if that eight was ever the smallest number, I wouldn't use it, I'd only use the next one there. Right, so what do we do now? We look at points B, A, C, D. We look at all of the edges. A's got a six, D's got a seven, a six, C's got a five. Well, as far as I'm concerned, that five is the smallest value. So we color it in and we keep going. I think it's fairly clear probably what the next one's gonna be. Because if we look at E, we have a two coming off of it. And there we go. So now let's just check, have we finished? Because what we should have done is not only does a spanning tree, we know the rules of a spanning tree. Um, we know that there is one, two, three, four, five, six vertices, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, which means I need five edges. One, two, three, four, five. I've got my five edges and believe it or not, I'm done. That is Prim's algorithm. It seems a bit magical really, doesn't it? But it's no more complicated than that. A connector problem, exactly the same idea, all right? What's a connector problem? It's basically a network uh, just in a different guy. So let's have a look here. A connector problem uses minimum spanning trees with some relationships to money. Ooh, money. When finding the minimum, it's also helpful uh, finding the cheapest way to do something. So this is an example from Vika. This is a question from Vika. At the showgrounds, 11 locations have access to water. Why do you think they've given me 11 locations? Because they're telling me the number of vertices, which I automatically now could write down the number of um, edges that I'm gonna have. So I know that for me to do this problem, hopefully I'm gonna need 10 edges. The locations are represented by vertices on the network diagram shown. The dashed lines on the network diagram represent possible water pipe connections. 
between adjacent locations. The numbers on the dash line show the minimum length of pipe in meters required to connect the location. So really, this is just setting it up. If this was an example in the, or the actual question in the exam, I'd be like, hallelujah. On the diagram, show where these water pipes would be placed. That's code for do a minimum spanning tree. And then calculate the total length in meters of water pipe that's required. Well, we can't do that for a moment. So what am I going to do? I'm going to choose, well, probably the most obvious one to start with is this point here. So we're going to start with this point here, and that has got to be a connection. There's no way that that can't be a connection. So now I'm going to look at the end there, and I've got a 60 and a 70 coming off. So I'm going to highlight that 60. What am I going to do now? I look at each of the edges, and I try and find the shortest one coming off. 70 at this end, nah, uh, 40 and a 70. I'm going to choose that 40 there. And I'm just bouncing around the diagram. Each time I do it, look at the edges, sorry, the vertices and see which is the smallest one coming off. So I've got this end here. I've got a 70 and a 60. I've got a 70. I've got a 70. So I think my 60 is going to be my best option there. I've got the end. Right, let's see, a 70, I've got a 70, I've got a 40, a 50. Well, there we go. That's going to have to be a 40 there. Liking this so far? I think she's literally the closest to colouring in we're ever going to get in maths. All right, now again, the end of the vertex, what have I got? I've got a 50, I've got a 50, a 70, and a 70. Now, it said you can choose either of these 50s so long as you don't rejoin a network or don't join or create a loop. So I'm going to just choose this one because I can. What do we do now? We look at the edges again, or we look at the ends again. So what have I got? I've got a 50, a 60, a 50, a 40, a 70. All right, so it's going to be my 40 there. All right, where do we go now? I've got a 50, a 60, a 50, and a 70. So we've got a 50. Let's do that one there. Where else are we going to go? How many edges have I got so far? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got two more edges to fit on here. So what have we got? We've got a 60, a 50, a 60, a 70. So I think it's clear that it's going to be a 50 there. One more edge, and we've got a 70, a 60. We can't choose that 70. We can't choose that 60 because it will connect up and form a loop. So I would have to choose this 60 here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fairly sure that's my correct answer. And now to answer the next part of the question, calculate the total length. Well, we would do 60 plus 60. We would add all of those together. Now, with any luck, my CAS calculator may well load up for me here. Oh, try again. 60 plus 60 plus 40 plus 60 plus 40 plus 50 plus 50 plus 50 plus 40 plus 60. Add those all together should give me 510, whatever. What did it say? Standard in meters. So my answer there would be 510 meters. And that pretty much is the end of the lesson. Thanks very much for watching. There's a few more minutes of the video left. If you can, give me a shout out to your mates. Thanks very much for watching. Hopefully this made sense. If you can, leave a comment on my YouTube channel or send me an email. Greatly appreciated either way. Hopefully I'll see you in another video, yeah? You take care and stay safe. Stay around for the next bit. See you soon. Thanks very much for watching guys. Yes, this is the end of another video. If you haven't already done so, can you click on my subscribe button? Yes, it doesn't mean anything other than the fact that I know that you are watching. Yes, it's greatly appreciated. Otherwise, I feel like I'm sitting here just talking to myself. And then yes, there is mathsguru.com of which you can see a still of now. And what is over there? Well, all the videos ordered by textbook, ordered by topic. You can search for the videos. You can download notes time codes, exam questions, and so, so much more coming up. Yeah, it's absolutely free to join. So I'm done. Thank you very much. I hope to see you in another video. Give me a shout out to your mates if you can. I just want to make sure that everyone finds maths interesting and easy. All right, take care, guys. See you again. Bye-bye. Stay safe.